this being the last tier 5 uh, vehicle I have used so far in the German line, uh, this, uh, I guess people call it the Death Toaster, and I could see why the resemblance of a toaster is possible. I definitely see it. Some people call it a lunchbox. I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, uh, what do you want to know about this vehicle? First and foremost, you are not, not even remotely going to be able able to be a frontline tank in this thing. This thing looks like, wow, look at that thick armor on this side. Look at that. That's amazing. Actually, when you start looking at it there, there's your thickness all the way through. Right on this edge. It's not. Is not, is not, is not meant to brawl. Your job in this is to sit back as far as you can that your vision and render range will allow you to and just blast the target away. And that's what this is. That's it. Nothing else. Now, the PZSFL 4C, and no, I am not going to try to uh, pronounce what this stands for. My German's okay, but not good enough to pronounce the full name of it. Blah, 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 blah. But... Uh, some people call it the Panzer Souffle. I could see the abbreviation there. Uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, if this gun hits you and you're of the same tier or one tier lower, or even two tiers lower, you're dead. You are dead. There's no if, what, or buts. This, effectively, on this tank destroyer, is a tier 7 gun. In sense, this gun is better and should be better than those found on the Tiger tanks. Simply because historically this thing was taking out planes. This is the dreaded 88 of World War II. This is what made so many Allied soldiers pretty much shit their pants in fear. This is what killed so many people. Planes, tanks, this is not a friendly vehicle. This tank will fuck shit up, and it will fuck up shit bad. Now, downside here, you really can't afford to take a hit. Anything that is HE or artillery related hitting you, you're dead with one shot. There is no armor. No armor. I mean, look, hull armor, 20, 14, 14. That 20, where is it? That's not this. That's this. This here. That's the 20. I'm pretty sure of it. And those 14-14, uh, that's 14 on here, 14 here. That is it. HE hits this, you're dead. <laughs> I hate to put it any other way. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> Another thing. You get spotted, you're dead. You can bring this awesome gun to bear this 88 to bear and kill stuff with relative ease if you hit it if RNG allows you to hit it uh, you hit people with this their game is going to be ruined the only reason that of them not going to be ruined is if you're fighting something two tiers higher you're fighting something that I mean uh, I've seen colossal damage done to KV-1s in this thing. I've done colossal damage in KV-1s with this thing. Right through the front plate without an issue. That's a hundred... It's not a hundred, is it? What is the KV-1? It's like 75? Blows right through it. Right, right through without an issue. Right through. And the damage it does is just earth-shattering. Earth-shattering. Absolutely vicious gun. That's what this is about. The gun. Speaking of guns, you have the option of three. Now, a lot of people will argue, do I go with this 88 or do I go with this Flak uh, 37 right here? The difference is between night and day and how you want to play the tank. Okay, the 88, things are like this. It's set up here. You got this huge blast shield here. You are limited 
greatly by where this gun can aim. I mean, you literally are stuck with a very, very narrow arc of uh, damage. Any tank off to your far right, you have to move to your whole tank. Wait for camo and all that, and your aiming time to kick in in order to do it. Because if you... It's just bad. That's the worst thing about this. Now, uh, the... What was the other one? The Pack 36, I think it was? 37. The Pack 37, the 88 Pack 37 here. This thing has a much more forgiving arc. It literally has a wider range, and that can save you quite a bit. I, I could see the use of both guns. I could see the argument for both. You have this huge ass freaking arc versus one that's extremely narrow. You can get one that's it's bigger damage, less arc, or more arc, less damage. You're stuck. You got to make your decision. Do you want to do more damage? Or do you want a wider arc? And the wider arc can help. It can be beneficial. I, I have this thing uh, with a camo net and binox. These get mitigated instantly the minute you overshoot your viewer, uh, your uh, arc of your gun. You have to rotate your gun uh, tank to, in order to get to a guy. So let's say it's over here, hiding in the shadows. You have to turn your whole tank to face it. That is the letdown. Another thing that I feel is utter crap that Wargaming has done, and why they just won't fix it, is that these, this armor on the side, actually folds down. This was a mobile platform for this 88. I mean, come on, look at this. Is that a lot of room for this many crew members? Come on. Okay. Minus one for being the driver. He's going to be down inside here. But you still have to share one, two, three, four, five locations inside this. Looks kind of goofy. Do you think five people fit in there? Mm-mm. This has to open up. This falls back. These fall down. Now, the reason they didn't do this, I think, is simply because... How much of an ass-kicking machine this would be if this, the, the sides, were down. If the sides were down, this thing historically had complete 360 rotation of its gun. This would blow most tank destroyers out of the water, especially at Tier 5. I mean, other tank destroyers at Tier 5 of the Russian ones, they're pretty much stationary, you know what I mean? They're stagnant. They, the Americans had the idea, let's put a turret on there, you know? I mean, uh, you look at the T-67, they have a turret, but it moves slow. That's the kicker. It moves slow. This thing, you know, I would imagine it would move slow too, but it's still 360 degrees. And with the death this thing brings, the damage and everything. I mean, you look at a, I think seriously, an overpowered vehicle if you think about it. I personally would love to see these to be dropped down on the sides, sticking out the sides. I would love to have that 360. Um, gun depression on this thing, which I haven't really talked about much in the past uh, on vehicles, a key deciding factor uh, on some tanks is abysmal on this. It gets five degrees of gun depression, so it says, and it's not good. It's not good at all. It's, if you're trying to hell fight, you're doing it wrong already with it. You don't hell fight with this thing. This thing is a death machine. You hide in the bushes, and you wait for one of your allies, or even sometimes yourself, if someone's close enough and you know you can take the shot, you blast them. But the minute you fire that shot, you need to get your ass in gear and get the hell out of there. Because you have a longer reload than most tanks, I would say. Even I would imagine, even with the rammer and all that stuff, if I decided to put it on there, 
and a skilled crew, you were still gonna have a longer uh, reload time than most. And all it takes is literally one or two shots and you're dead. And most times, this thing does see tier 7s and with an abundance. And by that time, it's it's over. You're getting hit by a tier 7. But just remember, you still have a gun that can mess up tier 7s. That's, like again, I can't express it enough. This gun is what this tank destroyer is about this gun, this gun, this gun. Now the next tank above it, which I'm almost there getting, is the Nashhorn. For those who don't know what that means in German, uh, that is Rhinoceros. And this thing is brutal. It uh, also has another 88 millimeter gun. It actually has two options. Uh, the basic pack L70, which I think was the one, uh, the second gun I was talking to you on the toaster about, and uh, I think this is the basic uh, gun of uh, the death toaster, and then this, this monster gun, Jesus, uh, I'm, am thinking about getting this. I'm kind of up in the air right now, and the reason why I'm kind of leaning towards it is simply because of how the shape of this blast shield is. It looks like it would rotate pretty far left and right and uh, that's what you're kinda looking for. High damaging guns, high penetration guns. Uh, that's what made the death toaster so effective with the 88 is that penetration. The penetration. And if you can get through a tank and deliver the damage, that's what you wanna do. You don't want to sit there, keep blasting shot after shot, but you're doing little damage. That's where the Stug fell apart. You're blasting through. You might have some penetration, but damage from it is not significant enough to warrant a rather fast rate of fire. And I, I don't know. I kind of like the fact a tank destroyer hits a target and messes it up or cripples it. Destroy or cripple. Uh, and I'm just wondering if this thing here has suitable gun arc from side to side if this whole piece rotates judging by the scrape marks on the side here and here it does possibly it ends right about here maybe which I really can't be a judge of until I get the vehicle and see firsthand but um yeah that, that I'm, I might end up getting the rhinoceros here and uh death toaster do I suggest it? It's a different way of style of playing. It's not a case made tank destroyer like the Stug or the Hetzer. Uh, this thing cannot take a hit. You take a hit, you're dead. You're spotted, you're dead. You, however, if you have a good team and a good map, map maps are also very key. To this tank survival. If you're getting city maps, your your chance of survival is going to be dropped significantly lower than it should. Uh, you get a wide open country uh, map like um, mm, the steps. Sure, I mean uh, you have a good chance because you can you get a long view range and whatnot. You got other tanks highlighting other tanks. Put a shot out, you can screw someone, screw them up bad and that's the point of the gun is to hurt someone and that's the point reach out and ruin someone's day and uh, I've noticed a lot of people actually will automatically go for this target because it's an easier kill because it has no armor and the fact that you're so damn dangerous with that long 80 uh, with this 88 that you have here very very dangerous vehicle just because of the gun everything else is yeah. Oh, and did I mention it's on a mix of a Panzer IV and Panzer III chassis? Just sweetens the deal for me even more. Until next time, I will wish you the best in what you play and have fun doing it. See you later.